All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing <clears throat> Child of Thunder by Mickey Zucker Reichert. This is uh, book number three in her last of the Renshai series. I have previously reviewed a books number one, Last of the Renshai, and book number two, The Western Wizard, on the channel. So if you want to watch either one of those reviews, just type in the title of the book, my last name, into your YouTube search bar, and that video review will magically appear upon your uh, computer screen. And we've got these other six books in uh, Mickey Zucker Reichert's Renshai universe that we will eventually read and review on the channel too. There's three separate trilogies, this trilogy, this trilogy, and then the trilogy here on the bottom. I'll separate them like that so it makes a little sense. Anyway, let's talk about the cover first because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. Again, we've got a great piece of artwork on the cover by Jody Lee who does a, did a lot of um, DAW books covers back in the um, late 80s, early 90s, late 90s and early 2000s. Great. I love all of the floating sort of Viking um, imagery in the back. We've got our warrior here on the back. It wraps around to have even more cool characters on the back. It's just really cool, a Stonehenge looking thing there. Just a dope cover overall, as uh, Mickey Zucker Reichert has done all the covers for all the books. No, that's not true. Mickey Zucker Reichert wrote all the books. Jody Lee did all the covers for all the books. So book number three came out in 1993. Colby, the last of the Renshai, is in his final training. Um, he has to do seven tasks under Shadamar, under the tutelage of Shadamar, the Eastern Wizard. Um, this story is, uh, you know, we find out who Colby is in books one and two. We get some adventures with that. All the other characters, a great, great cast of characters, by the way. All the way from wizards to Viking warriors to bards and thieves and gladiators and just elves and everything else you could want in a fantasy. This has got it. A lot of sword fighting, a lot of dueling, a lot of war. It is just a great series all around. Um, based heavily on Norse mythology. In fact, uh, you know, there's a, a, a nice map inside. Um, in fact, I wanted to read a passage that was so heavy in Norse mythology, I just had, I had to mark it down. I mean, this this will give you an idea of um, uh, sort of the um, world building of this um, this uh, thing. And this is, uh, they're reading, in this passage, one of the characters is reading out of one of their holy books. And it says, Men shall slay fathers to lie with mothers, Swords shall run with brother's blood. The wolf, Skull, shall swallow the sun and Hati the moon. There shall follow three bitter cold winters without a summer to break them. So shall begin the wolf age and the great battle which will see the passage of the Grey Lord Odin. The new age that follows shall be ruled by the survivors of the gods, Vidar and Vali, Baldur and blind Hod from the dead, and the sons of Thor, who will together wield their father's hammer. So as you can see, this is like right out of Viking legend. Um, uh, that's kind of what they worship. That's the gods they worship. They talk about it all the time. All of their world, all of their religion and uh, politics is built around this. And um, so anyway, um, they're like fantasy Vikings. And, and then the elves are introduced in this book too. In fact, an elf captain. He's just named Captain. He's a captain of a ship and is simply named Captain. Um, so the wizards um, in this book, the Eastern wizard, the Western wizard, the Northern wizard, the Southern wizard, they're not happy people. They are not Gan They're not happy-go-lucky Gandalfs or even funny like Fizban from Dragonlance. Um, they are just kind of always at each other's throats. They don't like each other. They're trying to sabotage each other. Um, but they all bring sort of balance to the force, if that makes sense. 
Um, uh, they're more like Saruman than Gandalf. Anyway, Colby, our main character, our last of the Renshai, our big fighter, the guy that's been around, the dude that's legendary, he um, now is uh, has to face the seven tasks of wizardry because he has to do this to know whether he is truly um, going to be strong enough to become the wizard of the West. Um, and... Uh, as he's going through these tasks, he finds out that there's an actual eighth task, which may be just too much for him or anybody. It's dangerous, and if he even whether he succeeds or fails, it's dangerous to humans um, and gods alike. This this uh, whole thing, and um, and and many of the other wizards just don't want him to succeed. Uh, or um, you know, and and during all of this, all of this plot, all of this stuff, all of this world building. Ragnarok, the final war, looms over everybody. And so um, that's kind of the basis of book three. Um, it really builds up. It, builds, it starts as just a simple story with a young boy who's a swordsman who has to flee his countryside, his small, comfortable home because people have invaded it. Starts just so simple, and then, and then we get to all the way through these adventures and all these characters and not everyone survives and now it's Ragnarok. This is one of my favorite fantasy series of all time, especially if you watched my 100 greatest fantasy books of all time or any of that stuff. Any of my ranking videos, you know that Mickey Zucker Reichert is on them, especially with these. So I'm giving, um, the whole trilogy is like a 10 out of 10 for me. I will be giving this one a 9.75 out of 10. Um, uh, just super cool trilogy. Uh, get them, folks.